Evan Fitzgerald with you, the Rebels. They get two of the best scoring guards in the SEC. And Trevor Tyree, not only is the team's leading scorer, but he's also stepped up his leadership, much more vocal. He's the dual threat. Half his shots are coming from beyond the arc, but he can also put pressure on the defense by attacking the rim. He gets to the free throw line five and a half times a game. His running mate, Terrence Davis, he can score in bunches, capable of knocking down the three from the outside, but he's at his best when he's in attack mode and getting to the basket and finishing strong at the rim. Terrence Davis went for 30 earlier this year. Tyree went for 28 in the game, and they both score more than 15 a night. A lot of growth for these two in the offseason and in the first month of this year. Yeah, a lot of leadership. That's the biggest thing as guys now that are a year older, taking some of that responsibility on their own shoulders. A lot of teaching the young guys in the shoot around. We saw a lot of that this morning. Very vocal, letting guys know where they're supposed to be on the floor. An impressive shoot around, and we'll have more on that as we move along today. The Chattanooga Mox out of the Southern Conference visiting. Ole Miss in the gray on offense. They throw it away to get things started. Kevin Easley, the leading scorer in that starting lineup. The freshman, he goes for more than 15 a game. And he does a very good job as a true freshman can step out, knock down the three, also likes to post up and mix it up inside a little bit. Right back to him. Yeah, the freshman, Blake Hinson, was covering. Nice cut by David Jean Baptiste. Easily able to get the assist there as well. Showing you his passing ability when he posts up on that block. He gets a lot of attention. Very dynamic. Uh, there is one of the elite players in the backcourt for Ole Miss. Terrence Davis with the first basket. He's the senior. And you want to see that out of Davis. Get to the rim. Attack. Don't settle for jump shots. Put pressure on the defense. That is when he's at his absolute best, when he can get to the basket and finish strong. The senior relied on for guidance, accountability this year. Jerry Johnson Jr. with the shot clock winding down. He'll take plenty of those shots from beyond the arc. Jonathan Scott has one more, and Chattanooga can pull ahead by three in the early moments. This is just hustle. Shot goes up. Go get the loose basketball. Jonathan Scott with the and one takes the contact, finishes. And there's a timeout on the floor. There may be a clock issue as that foul was being called. A, a, a terrific officiating crew, by the way. Joe Lindsay, he's on the far left. Chuck Jones and then Alandis Poole. And right now it reads 18-31. They're going to remove three seconds. So away we go. A good start right now if you're Chattanooga. Hustle on that end of the floor. And Jonathan Scott did a good job tracking down that loose ball, playing through contact. He's averaging 14 points a game over his last two games. He's really become more aggressive from beyond the arc as well. He only attempted 11 threes in the first nine games. He's gone eight of 12 from beyond the arc in the last two. 72% from the line this year. Saul Lamont Paris, the second year head coach at Chattanooga a moment ago. He's had to juggle that starting lineup. So someone like Scott benefiting from some extra minutes. He's had a couple guards, one injured, one suspended of late. Terrence Davis flashing the mid-range game. And he has a smooth game right there, showing his athletic ability, putting the ball on the deck, and then using that good athletic leap to get over the defender finishing in the lane. He's the senior from just south of Memphis, now in his final year. Foul, and this one is going back to Ole Miss. It's an offensive foul against Lamont Paris's team. Second year head coach, his first head coaching job molded 
by Greg Gard and Bo Ryan at Wisconsin. That's a nice pair to receive some molding from, huh? And he's taken a lot both on and off the court from those two guys. One thing that he wasn't used to in Wisconsin was having an extremely young team, and that's exactly what he has here at Chattanooga. There is not much experience, not much returning for this team. And he said, I've had to be very patient with these guys this year, teaching a lot, not only on the court, but just simple things. How you act on the bus, what you do at mealtime, how to prepare at a shoot around or a walkthrough, getting ready for an opponent. But he really likes his team. He's got some young, talented players as well. And the player with the ball, Gene Baptiste, is the only man who has logged minutes this year who was on the floor for Chattanooga a season ago. Davis, unselfish to his backcourt, made to find De Devontae Schuler. And here come the box. Really important for Chattanooga to clean up on the boards. Don't allow Ole Miss any second chance opportunities. Lamont Paris, he mentioned his team a little better rebounding the ball the last few games. The offense has clicked for the Moss. Johnson misses, and then the loose ball foul against the visiting club. So aggressive on the offensive boards. That's one you can live with. You're a coach, easily trying to get in there for the second chance opportunity. So the top scorer for Chattanooga hit with his first. Here's Brian Tyree, he's the junior from New Jersey. Playing a little more off the ball at times this year, and that's benefited his game. How about the slash to the rim, Terrence Davis again. If you're an Ole Miss fan, that's exactly what you want to see. This is a really good start for Terrence Davis. He is in the attack mode right now, trying to get to the rim, finishing at the basket. Also showed his mid-range game. Playing to his strengths right now. And then the defense as well. The foul against Chattanooga. Terrence Davis, Brian Tyree, everybody being pushed by the first-year head coach, Kermit Davis. He took the head coaching job on March 15th after spending 16 years at Middle Tennessee State, demands defensive efficiency from this team. And there's always an adjustment when you got a first-year coach that comes into the program. And how are you guys going to respond to each other? Talking with Kermit Davis today, he said something about these players, they all love Old Miss. He said that made the transition a lot easier. These guys wanted to be here. These guys love the school. They love going to school here. And they want to be coached up. So that made the transition much smoother. And it's been a good relationship so far. Here's one of the freshmen, K.J. Buffett at the line. Rarely do you see zero players transfer after a coaching change these days. Nobody transferred. And it, it just shows, as we talked about, you don't see it as often, the loyalty to the school. These guys really love Ole Miss. They wanted to be here. They wanted to stay. They're sticking it out. They've enjoyed this so far early on. A couple turnovers early for Chattanooga. And chases A.J. Caldwell to the bench. And Donovan totally into the game. He was suspended for the prior three games. And the freshman is out there. Good score. Dominic Olenicek. Back to Davis. And here's the ball movement. One side of the floor to the other. Although a little too much dribbling on the baseline. And the ball back to Chattanooga. Terrence Davis, his game, it's improved. Great miss. And because of Terrence Davis getting to the basket, finishing at the rim, that's when he's at his best. Four point lead for the Rebels. Welcome to Pilot. Oh, uh, it's pretty bad. We've got clean restrooms right over there and showers, too. That's totally just an FYI. Hey, I need chips, drinks, ice and hot dogs. How'd you know that? Is that pizza? Yeah, we make it fresh throughout the day. Coffee, cold fountain drink, grab and go case. We've got great things for people on the go, like um, sandwiches and fruit cups and salads. We've got soups and chili. 
Gary, 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 I am proud of you, my man. Making simple, smart cash back choices. With Quicksilver from Capital One, you're earning unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. Like on that new laptop. Quicksilver keeps things simple, Gary. And smart, like you. <laughs> and I like that. I guess I am pretty smart. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. What's in your wallet? Winter nasal congestion. Is it a cold, sinus pressure, allergies? For all of them, there's Allegra D, a maximum strength decongestant plus a powerful non-drowsy antihistamine for 24-hour relief. This winter, the answer is Allegra D. Sports fans are gearing up at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and players you love. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Back inside the pavilion in Oxford. Ole Miss with an early four-point lead over Chattanooga. And with the former Illinois guard, Sean Harrington, Kevin Fitzgerald with you today in Oxford. Terrence Davis already with a quick six points. And look out now, he's gone for 30 already once this season. Yeah, he's an explosive scorer. And this was an excellent start in today's game. But going back earlier in the season, a game at Butler, he had 30. And in this game... He had six threes, and he shows that he can be a very capable scorer from the outside. But he's at his best when he can get to the rim. He's attacking, putting pressure on the defense. And as a senior, showing that he can carry the scoring load and take some of the pressure off some of the younger guys, let them fall into a comfortable situation. That game maybe best exhibited how his all-around game has improved. He doesn't rely solely on outside shots anymore, attacks. We saw him hit a 15-footer today. Why the growth? Why do you see that from Terrence in his senior year? Sometimes when you're a senior, you realize it's your last go-around, and you want it to be a special season. Obviously, the coaching change. He's got a different voice in his ear at times and then it relies on yourself making the adjustments making improvement we talked about it. he's not shooting as many threes only about a third of his shots coming from beyond the arc he can make them he should take them when he's open but you want to see him attack and be aggressive Jonathan Scott misfires Keegan Kirby he has impressed his head coach Lamont Paris of late two-point game Kirby, just a freshman, he's gotten better and better as the young season's already gone on. Averaging close to seven points a game over the last four. He had an injury, missed most of the non-conference, or most of the off-season. So as a true freshman, you miss those reps, you miss that conditioning. It's going to take you a while to get into game shape. It's a good job by Kirby sneaking in there on the backside and then using the rim as protection from the defender and finishing. He's going to get better and better as the season goes on. You can see conditioning is getting a little bit better. Starting to get used to the speed of the game as well. Yeah, it's reasonable to expect that, as you said, from someone who missed such a large chunk of preseason. Now Kirby dragged that pivot foot. There's a travel. And those are the turnovers that drive Lamont Paris just crazy. And not really forced turnovers, just mental mistakes. In a game like this, you're on the road. Against a good opponent, got to get quality looks at the basket every trip down the floor. Bree and Tyree, 15 footer down and out. Buffin got caught underneath. And he's got two shots coming after he was bumped on the putback. AJ Buffin, player you're really going to like if you're Old Miss, leads the team in rebounding. That's a true freshman. He's getting it done. Gets in there. He's aggressive, active on the boards. Already had a couple of rebounds in this ball game. He was commit to Kermit Davis at Middle Tennessee State. Of course, comes along after Davis takes the head coaching job here in March. You said some, something a moment ago. It's a good team, this Ole Miss team. I think they are. They're better than many would have perhaps expected them to be nine games into the year. The only two losses at Butler and to a very good Cincinnati team. Uh, at the rim, Ramon Vila tried to slam it down. Buffin, they might have walked. Yeah, travel. Little 
over Eager, had that clear path to the rim. And right there, Tyree knew it as well. He maybe gave Buff the ball in a position where he couldn't handle it, but good recovery by another freshman, Henson, not giving up on the play. Gets back into the action. And just the in-between play there led to a turnover travel. Not sure if he needed to take that dribble or not. Vila, shot blocked. Bruce Stevens, freshly into the game. Nice save on the baseline. Now, who was the last touch block? Ole Miss basketball. Good hustle getting back into the play that time. Schuler diving on it. Kermit Davis's practices shoot around today, detail oriented. Maybe that expectation, perhaps an explanation for the 72 start. Yeah, a lot of teaching points at the shoot around. Mm. Tyree, nice step back move there. Gets separation from the defender on the step back. Allows for the clean release on the shot. Johnson misfires. DC Davis with the basketball over to Tyree. A whistle. And this may be an offensive foul, and it's going to go against DC Davis after that handoff to Schuler. Just running through, those dribble handoffs have been an emphasis. You have to get set, you can't run through. Here's the release of the ball, and then just continues to run on through right into the defender. It's an easy call right in front of the official. Donovan totally. He's the freshman we mentioned a little while ago. And that's what he can do. He can really get into the lane, put pressure on the defense. Couldn't finish that time. And a whistle on the drive to the basket. Foul was on totally. But it was on the pass. So Ole Miss inbounds underneath the hoop. Players lobbying for po inside position on and the inbound. Bumps. Landis Poole said, I'm watching you. Davis wanted it, and he wanted it to feed down to the big man, Bruce Stevens. That's big for Ole Miss. Want to get Bruce Stevens going? He needs to be active around the rim. He's a skilled player. Foul on the drive. This is a really good pass inside to Stevens. Put it right where the defense couldn't get it. Lead Stevens to the basket. You want to see more out of that from Steven scoring around the rim, being aggressive. He's averaging close to 20 minutes a game. He's only attempted six free throws on the year. With that body and his skill, he should be active around the rim, drawing more fouls, get to that free throw line a little bit more. 6'8", about 250 pounds. He's in the paint. He's guarding Justin Brown. And Johnson right there. Sky's in for two. Another guy that's starting to play well as the season goes on. Jerry Johnson averaging 16 points a game over the last four. Really taking over the scoring load. Yep. DC Davis for three. He had 12 in the season opener. It's been kind of quiet since then. Good job stepping into a three that time. And a careless pass. Ole Miss basketball. Teams trading baskets. Good drive, drive to the rim. Finish from Jerry Johnson. And the answer on the other end, D.C. Davis. 
from downtown. Is it true Academy speaks kid? It sure is. So what did your niece say when you asked her about Christmas? She just said, I don't know. Oh, easy. She wants a bike. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, and my nephew was just like, whatever. Oh, classic. Nike hoodie. And my son, he was just quiet. Hey, Kate, what do we got for quiet? Jump zone trampoline. <laughs> From the store that those gifts best, Merry Christmas and Happy New Gear. Academy Sports and Outdoors. At Regions Bank, we're here to help you move your life forward. But managing money can be tough. That's why sometimes we bring in a little extra help. It's only $1,500. Mm -hmm. I'll use it this time, I promise. Sure. $1,500 for a soon-to-be very expensive doorstop probably isn't the best investment. Exactly. Look, you don't need fancy equipment to get in shape. Check out my personal program at tboflex.com. You should do whatever he's doing. It's free. Check it out. Regions, official bank of the SEC. So Wednesday, we've got a college basketball doubleheader. The sixth-ranked Virginia Cavaliers head to Columbia, take on South Carolina at 7, and at Georgia Tech at Arkansas at 9. Both games right here on the SEC Network and on the ESPN app. Let's go around the SEC. Saturday was a busy one. The SEC almost went perfect, almost won every single game. Tennessee goes into FedEx for him, defeats Memphis. Admiral Schofield has another phenomenal day. Kentucky bounces back with a win. And then Auburn in overtime against UAB pulls it out behind Jared Harper's 31 points. Yeah, Tennessee, obviously, has been the story of the SEC so far. Very impressive to knocking off Gonzaga earlier as when they were number one. And they look as good as anybody in the country right now. And Definitely a Final Four caliber type team. Really enjoy that backcourt at Auburn as well. Harper and Brown have been terrific all season long. You know who's been terrific? How about the band? Pre-game and in-game here at the Pavilion. Uh, the playlist has been on fire. So the players coming out of the tunnel, kind of <laughs> yeah. nodding their heads, getting into it as well. National Lampoon's Christmas vacation night as well in the pavilion. So this is quite a busy day around here. Foul underneath. And good look. Really good set. Coming out of the break. Hey, 43 back. 43 back next. You know, Auburn has a great backcourt as you're referencing. You can't really sleep on this Ole Miss backcourt as well. You have three guards that average 11 points or more per game. Schuler, one of them. You know, we already talked about Davis and Tyree, what they bring to the table. And anytime you have good guard play, you're going to have a chance to be in a lot of games and win a lot of games. They find their big man again. Bruce Stevens, you think it's key. He's got to get going today. He is. He's definitely a, an X factor for this team. But he needs to play off those guards. That time is Terrence Davis getting all the pressure on him as he drives into the lane and then dumps it down to Stevens at the rim. Kevin Easley hit a bunch of those against Michigan earlier this year, but he misfires on this drive. Bruce Stevens again. So don't forget I can step out and knock down the three, and he can do that. Just keep being aggressive at the rim as well. Foul on Schuler. This is uh, Ole Miss's lead out to 12 now, thanks to the triple. Stepping into your shot, always the best time to take a three. Get those feet set. Good confidence. That ball coming off the hand of Stevens as well. One, three, one look. Now Ole Miss. That's where you can get some open looks, get the ball moving side to side. And some corner opportunities. Three to shoot. Totally the freshman for three. Didn't know if they recognized the shot clock was winding down. Mont Paris was screaming it from the bench. Totally heard it. They'll step up and knock down three just before the shot clock. 
Davis back to K.J. Buffett. A traveling violation. And this is where Kermit Davis will make a quick hook if he needs to. Yeah, if you turn the basketball over quickly, you're coming out, and there's the three right before the shot clock goes off. And about Chattanooga being a young team, that's where who on the floor is going to recognize that the shot clock was winding down and make sure they get a shot up. Ole Miss back to man-to-man -to -man pressure. Easley puts his head down, and he traveled. Fifth turnover for Chattanooga today. Easley's got really good footwork inside. Especially for a true freshman. That time, just slid the foot. Thought he was open a little earlier. And that's one of those plays that, as this team gets older and they play together a little bit more, Easley had the defender on his back. Give it to him right away when he was deeper in the lane. Stevens heading back to the line. That's a good possession for Old Miss and Stevens. That's what you want to see out of the big guy. Be aggressive down on the block. So seven of Ole Miss's last ten points to Stevens. Now eight. And it's just about at his season average of nine points per game. And he didn't start today. Came off the bench. And he's at his season average. And he's playing to his strength. Get down around the rim. The guards are driving. Make yourself available. And then post up hard, post up strong, and then knock down the three when it's in rhythm. And he's done that here this evening. Jonathan Scott knocks it down. Chattanooga hit 17 threes last time out against Georgia State. A lot of it because of Jonathan Scott. He's made eight of his last 12 over the last two games. So he's really starting to feel comfortable and confident behind the arc. And Scott, the defensive intensity here on Terrence Davis. Pull up. Hinson misfires. The three ball has Chattanooga within eight. How about totally the freshman returning from a suspension with the move? And that's going to get you some playing time right there. That's what you want to see. Aggressive. Get to the basket. He is really quick with the basketball. That time blowing by the defender. Another foul on all Miss. This on Schuler. Down to totally just showing how quick he can be off the dribble. Blows by the defender, finishes at the rim. I've seen him get into the lane now a couple times in this ball game. And a freshman from Maryland. Boy, Lamont Paris could use what totally is bringing to the table today. Buff into Davis for two more. Good defense from Ole Miss, but that's the turnover right there. It'll drive you nuts if you're Chattanooga. You can't get back and defend breakaway layups. Ole Miss with more turnovers in the box today. On the baseline, good find, David Jean Baptiste. And totally making a big impact Absolutely. early. Absolutely, that's totally again attacking. Getting past the defender and then finding his open teammate. Luis Rodriguez, rebound to Scott. A drive, probing in, two free throws. D.C. Davis whistled for another. Scott from the free throw line when we come back. Chattanooga being aggressive, scoring around the rim, keeping this one tight. Saturday for power college football and December 29th is the Saturday of all Saturdays why because it's the college football playoff first it's Davos dominant defense versus the resurgent fighting Irish of Notre Dame 
Then you got Saban, Tua, and the Tide versus Kyler Murray and the Explosive Suits. Two can't miss, can't look away playoff semifinals. Comes to Notre Dame at four, Alabama, Oklahoma at eight. Saturday, December 29th on ESPN. The Works Axis is more tool for more tasks. Push the button and easily pivot from jigsaw to reciprocating to knock out any project and swap the blades to keep cutting with our tool free blade change system. Work smarter, not harder with the Works Axis. Introducing the Work Switch Driver. With two rotating chucks, you can switch between bits in a second and get projects done twice as fast. Switch from drilling to driving and more. Power through your projects faster and easier with a Work Switch Driver. Get yours today. Over here, oh, this way. Good boy. <gasps> no peeking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You've been a very good boy. <laughs> Make their dreams come true this holiday season. Shop for your pet's favorite food, toys, and treats at Chewy.com, where pet lovers shop. Fantastic women's basketball game on Tuesday at 6 Eastern. Number 11, Stanford. Number 9, Tennessee. You can always watch it on the ESPN app from anywhere. Stanford off to a great start. Tennessee as well. These are two of the best programs in the history of the game. Ten national championships combined. Tennessee with eight of those. And this year, these two squads have combined 15 and 1. Holly Warlick and Tara Vanderveer, the two head coaches, have done a phenomenal job. Thomas Smallwood, the senior from Bordeaux, France, on Chattanooga's roster. He has his parents here watching him in person for the first time as a Chattanooga mom. It's Nadine and David. Now, on Wednesday, they went from Bordeaux to Amsterdam, then to Atlanta, then flew to Chattanooga, got here on Thursday, finally, and they're going to spend the holiday season with their son. A lot of frequent flyer miles there. Absolutely, putting in the time, <laughs> putting in the miles. Thomas was thrilled to have them here. He's at... Where he didn't get a lot of playing time, so he's excited to be out there on the floor contributing. The parents get an opportunity to see him in person for the first time this season. At UAB for three years, he's the first grad transfer in Chattanooga men's basketball history. Ola Echek wondering, hey, does the basket count? Was there a foul? And it's going to go against Chattanooga. And foul is on Scott. One and one for Olin Echek. <laughs> Offensive rebound, Rodriguez. He got his team two points on the offensive board. Got to hold the box out. The ball took a tough bounce for Chattanooga. Really good job by Rodriguez to stick with it. Another freshman, but they like his potential. Kirby, too tall for the seven footer, Thomas Smallwood. Each team has turned the ball over seven times. And out to the other big man on this side of the floor. Oladicek is heading back to the line for two. Ole Miss has done a good job of getting the bigs involved early on in this ball game. This is a really good backcourt where the majority of the scoring is going to come from throughout the season. But you need a balanced attack. And we've seen it in this ball game so far. Well, it seems like the guards are searching for those picks. It's not off of missed shots, but a lot of post-ups, no? Yeah, a lot of drop-downs. So if those guards can penetrate, get into the lane, put the pressure on the defense, everybody knows coming into this ball game. You got Tyree averaging 16, Davis 15, Schuler almost 11. 
So that's what the focus on the scouting report is going to be is shut down the old Miss guards. So if they can draw attention, get into the lane, put the pressure on the D, find some of these bigs, get them some easy baskets. Old Miss wants to see if they can get a little bit more of that balanced attack throughout the year. Kirby way off the mark. And now Terrence Davis and the Rebels can run. And Chattanooga does a nice job getting back. Back to Alden Echek. The third straight touch. And the hook shot is good. And that's what you're going to see is a lot of one-on-one -on -one defense. Because of the firepower from the guards, you're not going to double down in the post. You're going to lock in on the shooters. And you know as a big, you've got all day in there to work your man one-on-one. -on -one. Got to be patient. Be slow. Be under control. Make a good post move and finish. Good find. And Ramon Vila has it back to an eight-point game. The assist to totally good job keeping his head up. Seeing Vila sneak in behind the defenders on the backside. Davis hits the fall away. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. He is off to a really good start. And again, it's been attacking the rim, mid-range jump shots. Eight points for Davis, who scores more than 15 per game, nine games in. Gene Baptiste, rebound to Davis at six foot four. He's a great rebounding guard. All that he check with the right hand again. Lamont Paris, he wanted a little bump, but it's two. Yeah, a little contact for sure underneath, but Ol Nichek did a really good job of running straight to the rim to get deep position. Ole Miss ball. One too many turnovers for Lamont Paris' team. The second year head coach of the Mox. Those are the ones that are tough, just unforced. The only bright side to that one that didn't lead to a run out. Did you set your defense here? A really good job sharing the basketball for Ole Miss, assisting on nine of the 13 shots already in this game. If you notice right now, a lot of ball movement yep. out of this Rebel team. Ball and body. Watch the cuts, watch the passes. There's the freshman again, Buffin. Boy, totally can really run. Rare to see Jerry Johnson Jr. pass up a three. Vila. And nice move, uses the left hand. Ten-point really, game again. Real good move for Vila. This is only his second game transfer from Arizona State. Wasn't eligible until the semester. Had six in his last outing. That was his first game of the season. He's going to give them a good inside presence this year. Really good footwork on the move inside. Talked about the guard play. For Chattanooga, so looking to get some inside scoring as well. That time, Vila, really good job setting up the defender, making his move to the middle and countering back. Good finish at the rim. A senior from Purvis, Mississippi, misfires on the first. DC Davis. Hold on, he checked to the bench. Ole Miss, 6 of 11 from the stripe to start. That one somehow finds A.J. Caldwell. And now the box can try to set up the offense. Shot clock again here. Who's going to take control of this possession for Chattanooga? Maybe the freshman. Got to let it go. And he sinks it. Kevin Easley. 
And they'll check to see if that was off before the shot clock. And we'll take a timeout while they do so. Nine point game after Easley's fadeaway. Freshman playing with plenty of confidence. A little bit of offense from Chattanooga. The fadeaway just before the shot clock. Good move from Easley. Step back fade. Turn on Smart Relief, and it turns off pain. But turn off Smart Relief, the relief keeps going. I see how Smart Relief keeps on working even after you take it off because it boosts the release of endorphins, relieving pain for hours. Smart Relief, turn off pain. If you're in the market, your nest egg's been on a wild ride lately. Personal capital can help with a free investment checkup. You'll get all these free retirement and investing tools, plus this free guide at personalcapital.com slash guide. SEC Women's Basketball Tournament is tipping off in Greenville, South Carolina, March 6th through the 10th. Be a part of the experience. This is your opportunity to witness the best student athletes in the country compete for the 2019 SEC Tournament Championship title. We will see you in that Greenville. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit secsports.com. SEC Women's Basketball. It just means more. Back inside the pavilion today at Oxford, Mississippi. A nine-point advantage for the Rebels. Terrence Davis hasn't missed a shot today. Neither has Bruce Stevens at duo. Sean is 7 of 7 from the field. And the senior stepping up here in this ball game, setting the tone early. Terrence Davis has been in attack mode, getting to the rim, putting pressure on the D. And he's got a very good mid-range jump shot as well. Stevens, the X factor on this team, they'd like to get him going a little bit more. See if he can be aggressive around the basket, and that's what he's done here this evening. And yes, he can step back, knock down the three as well when he gets those feet set. Stevens already at his season average of nine per game. Terrence Davis, uh, he's gone for 30 already this season, earlier against Butler on the road. Ad admittedly, we're only nine games in, but remember that the bottom really fell out last year for Ole Miss. Lost 20 games. They haven't lost that many games in over 30 years until last season. And offensively, how has this offense changed a bit and improved, especially for those two? Yeah, two things. And right now, as a team, the ball is moving. It's not sticking in guys' hands. There's a lot of ball and body movement. So multiple guys getting involved each possession. And the second thing is guys have taken it upon themselves to improve in the offseason. You have to work on your game. Talked about in the open, Davis and Tyree have both done a really good job improving their games, taking accountability to being more vocal. They're teaching the young guys. When you start teaching the young guys, that means you really get it. When you really get it, the game slows down. You start making the right decisions, you start making the right plays. And they both voiced it to us, the accountability, a trickle down from the new head coach, Kermit Davis. The three ball keeping Chattanooga in the game, six point ball game after Johnson knocks one down. 60% of his shots are gonna come from beyond the arc. A very capable shooter from beyond the three point line. The green light. Davis and Buffett playing catch, but Buffett, he does not agree that that was a travel. He may have stepped out yeah, of balance. I think, I think he was calling stepping on the, yep. the sideline. Just got to be aware of where you're at. Kermit Davis, again, giving teaching points to the young freshman as he comes to the bench. Ole Miss, a one point led by 12 in this half. That's sliced in half. Easily again, versatile game. Shuffled the feet. Got a little too excited as he got closer to the rim there. He was going in for his jump stop. 
Got those feet moving quicker than the dribble. Lamont Paris, he's got the freshman easily from Indianapolis. He's top 10 of the league in scoring. He's got a really versatile game offensively. Another foul on Paris' club. And so Blake Hinson is at the line for a one and one. And it is Easley who is whistled for his second. Easley off Kirby back on the floor. Ole Miss's once double-digit lead, it's evaporating. It's not converting from the free throw line. Yeah, they've already missed six. That's all right. They, they have been lights out about 80% from the line this year. That's top 10 of the country. A lot of times free throw shooting is contagious. They've been making them this year, so everybody makes them. You miss a few early on the game. Other guys start missing them. And that's allowed Chattanooga to chip away at this lead and stay in this ball game. Totally. Out to Scott. Looks good and he hits it. Four point game. Talked about Scott being hot from the outside, making eight out of 12 in the last two games coming in. But again, really like totally, he knew he wanted to get the ball to Scott that time and he penetrated with the purpose of kicking to a teammate. Scott finishes it off. And so five triples for Chattanooga in the first half. Offensive board. Schuler, no. Good box out by Scott. Kirby with the rebound. Vila running. Right hand. He lays it in. Timeout Ole Miss. Two-point game with 117 left in the first. This is a really good response from a Chattanooga team that is extremely young, playing on the road. Got down by 12. They've chipped away. Got all the way back down to two. Here's the penetration from Toby out to Scott, who has just been lights out from three in the last couple games. And then defense not getting back. Good job by Vila. Running the floor. Finishes at the rim. The Mox have hit their last five shots. Use an eight to one run to make this a game again before the half. Terrific response. Really good poise and patience by a young team going on the road. You can see the confidence coming out of that huddle, guys, talking to each other. I think this man, Totally's presence has certainly galvanized the attack, no? Yeah, and he gives you something that you can't teach. It's a guy that's a jet quick with the basketball, can get into the lane. And I like the approach that he's taking in this ball game. He's got his head up looking for teammates. He's setting guys up. If he can do that, there's some scoring around him. It can make you pay. That's what his head coach asked of him. Hey, we want you to score, but feed the open man. Another foul, though. Ole Miss has lived at the free throw line in this first half. It's Jonathan Scott's second. And yeah, totally, he was suspended for three games, a violation of team rules. Lamont Paris with a teaching moment of his own. Now he has totally back. It's a good response. This is totally his first game back since that suspension. And he's done a really good job of doing what the coaches have asked. And he's looked like a completely different player right now. He saw the missed free throws from Ole Miss. Very unusual for this team that shoots it well from the line. Well, Nietzsche able to knock down a couple that time. Yeah, a rare two for two trip at the line today. For the best free throw shooting team in the SEC. All miss, nothing from the field. From a Chattanooga team that is extremely young, playing on the road, got down by 12. They've chipped away, got all the way back down to two. Here's the penetration from Totally out to Scott, who has just been lights out from three in the last couple games. And then defense not getting back. Good job by Vila. Running the floor, finishes at the rim. The Mox have hit their last five shots. Use an eight to one run to make this a game again before the half. Terrific response, really good poise and patience 
by a young team going on the road. You can see the confidence coming out of that huddle, guys, talking to each other. I think this man, Totally's presence has certainly galvanized the attack, no? Yeah, and he gives you something that you can't teach. It's a guy that's a jet quick with the basketball, can get into the lane. And I like the approach that he's taking in this ball game. He's got his head up looking for teammates. He's setting guys up. If he can do that, there's some scoring around him that can make you pay. That's what his head coach asked of him. Hey, we want you to score, but feed the open man. Another foul, though. Ole Miss has lived at the free throw line in this first half. It's Jonathan Scott's second. And yeah, totally. He was suspended for three games, a violation of team rules. Lamont Paris with a teaching moment of his own. And now he has totally back. It's a good response. This is totally his first game back since that suspension. And he's done a really good job of doing what the coaches have asked. And he's looked like a completely different player right now. We saw the missed free throws from Ole Miss. Very unusual for this team that shoots it well from the line. Well, Nietzsche able to knock down a couple that time. Yeah, a rare two for two trip at the line today. For the best free throw shooting team in the SEC. Ole Miss, nothing from the field in the last five and a half minutes. David Jean Baptiste, six of three. A whistle, a coach's box warning, or pardon, a timeout taken by Chattanooga. So Lamont Paris will use this one with 42 seconds left. This is really good execution from Chattanooga. You have one minute to go. You want to get two possessions to Ole Miss one, and they take the shot clock down. Uh, halfway through the shot clock, good penetration again, the kick out. Gene Baptiste will knock it down. Now, talk about it all the time in practice. We want to get a score, a stop, and a score to end of the half. And that's what Chattanooga's done. They put themselves in position. They've gotten their score. Now they want to set up their defense, try to get a stop. They can get a stop and a score. They've got the lead going into the half. When you were down 12, it's a really, really good response from this young group. So the 16 to 3 run, what have you seen? You mentioned they're getting into the paint. That's opening up some shots? Absolutely. They're playing as a really good unit right now. And it started with Totley. He's gotten into the lane. He's putting pressure on the defense. Defense is collapsing, kicking out to shooters. And they've definitely done a good job on the defensive end. And obviously, Ole Miss hasn't made shots and they've missed some free throws here. That's allowed Chattanooga to chip into this lead. Schuler the head fake. Sophomore beats Olden Echek. Offensive foul. He threw the left arm out. And Vila, the Arizona State transfer, he gets the call. It's going to be one on one. You're not going to double down off shooters. Vila just stands his ground. That's an easy one to call. Can't lower the shoulder and extend that arm when you're down on the block. And the emotion from Vila after the call. Partner, it sets up exactly. What you had just forecast, maybe a chance for Chattanooga to take a lead into halftime. Yes. Score, stop, score here. You get the last shot of the half if you're Chattanooga. Jerry Johnson Jr., another three. Chattanooga hits its final seven shots. Goes out a 16 to 3 run on the road in the pavilion. You can't you can't draw it up any better for Chattanooga. This is how you finish a half score, stop, score, and this is the last one against the zone. Johnson from Long Range buries it just before the horn to give Chattanooga the lead. The box hit 17 threes last time out. They have six in the first half and a two-point lead on the road at SEC Country. So a two-point advantage for the box. Bruce Stevens had a good half. The box simply better. So we'll be back with our halftime report after these messages.
You don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. At Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, you'll find big savings on great gifts in stores and online. Like savings of 30% on Lou's RZ Bait Cast Combos. And Bass Pro and Cabela's gift cards are always a perfect gift. Support your favorite college at Fanatics.com, the largest assortment of officially licensed fan gear from more than 500 colleges. Every conference, every team. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. We are Ole Miss Rebels. As Mississippi's flagship university, we dig deeper, see farther, work harder. We pioneer human organ transplants. We helped prove Einstein's theory of gravitational waves. We are distinguished as a Carnegie R1 top 2.5% research institution. We are Ole Miss, transforming lives and the world. Mint Mobile has three months of wireless for just 20 bucks? That'd make the holidays even happier. Pine tree, please. Redwood. Get three months of wireless for just 20 bucks at mintmobile.com. Here's the thing. 52% of guys experience erectile dysfunction, but 0% like talking about it. That's why we built Roman. For the first time ever, you can get ED meds prescribed online, shipped discreetly to your door. Chat online with U.S. licensed physicians and get FDA-approved medication, all in single-dose packaging. No more waiting rooms, awkward talks, or lines at the pharmacy. Get started with your free online visit at GetRoman.com slash TV. Mint Mobile has three months of wireless for just 20 bucks? That'd make the holidays even happier. Oh, you guys got a turkey. Cute. We're having an ostrich. Get three months of wireless for just 20 bucks at mintmobile.com. Welcome into the SEC Halftime Report. I'm Melissa Lang, Coach Kennedy, Antoine Walker. We're going to take a look at some of the action that's been going down this weekend around the SEC, starting with Auburn taking on UAB, and this was an overtime thriller, guys. We're going to go straight into OT. Jared Harper, check him out, racing up the court. He's going to stop, put on the brakes, Ooh. hit the bank shot. Auburn goes up four. Monster second half from Jared Harper. He got in his bag when Auburn needed it the most. Harper this time with the miss, but Anthony McElmore is there with the putback. Tigers go up three. Then Harper again splitting the defense, and he'll finish at the rim. Big game, like you said, Coach. He had a career-high 31 points. Auburn goes on to win 75-71. Kentucky hosting Utah yesterday. And, guys, guess who was in the house? Santa Claus. Of course, it's that time of year. Who knew Santa Claus was a Wildcat fan? Yep, yeah. there he is, rocking the Kentucky blue yeah, and white. got that blue and white on. Love it. Keldon Johnson came out on fire Saturday, guys, here hitting the three. Later connecting from the other side, but as usual, he ends up being the stud for the Wildcats in the first half. Santa brought him some nice-looking sneakers and an improved jumper. That kid's been in the gym. Cats were up 14 at the break. Second half, they were staying hot from the three. This time, it's Tyler Hero from deep. Wildcats go up 19. Then Emmanuel quickly is getting in on the action here with the floater. Kentucky up 14. Johnson again. He's going to finish it out for us with the three. Kentucky up 17. They go on to win 88 to 61. The Wildcats putting on another good show. Arizona State taking on Georgia. And this was a crazy, crazy finish. Big matchup for the Bulldogs in Athens hosting the Sun Devils. We're starting in the second here. Jordan Harris on the steal. Ty Fagan for the layup. The Bulldogs looked good, Antoine. Yeah, big time finish right there, especially with the game on the line. But this move right here, big time. Give me that. Man, Lou Dort attacking, gets the go-ahead score. Arizona State retakes the lead. Last chance for the Dogs, guys. It's Claxton with the shot. It'll be no good. The Bulldogs, who were up for much of this one, lose a heartbreaker, 76-74. And if you asked me halfway through this game, I would not have thought the Georgia Bulldogs were going to lose that one. Up 18, all the momentum. Stegman was rocking. 
foul trouble to their best player. Rashawn Hammonds had to leave. Did not play really at all in the last 10 minutes of the game. Guard play, they were searching to stop the bleeding mm -hmm. and unfortunately couldn't come up with a play. Give Arizona State credit. First true road game for Arizona State, and they made huge plays down the stretch. So Vanderbilt will have a chance to avenge that loss for Georgia. Do you think they can do it? They'll take on Arizona State on Monday, and they might have a chance to, uh, like I said, aven avenge Georgia because that was, a, that was a tough one. Well, obviously, this is, a, you know, they're starting life now without uh, Darius Garland. So started off really well. You know, we think about they, they played well against Middle Tennessee, dominant game. Now you got two ranked opponents you're going to play back-to-back, -back, Arizona State and Kansas State. So it's going to be a big test for, um, for Vandy to see if they're able to do it. But Vandy at home, they can come out and make some threes, um, get the tempo going. Arizona wouldn't mind playing up and down with them. And I think Vandy would like to go up and down. It may come down to the three-point shot. It's going to be completely different. You would say, well, what did they learn from this game? Number one, they learned that you have to attack the paint and play inside out against Arizona State, and you have to defend them. I thought Georgia did a great job defensively of bottling in Arizona State, who came in averaging close to 84 points per game. And throughout the course of the game, they were never allowed to get into a rhythm. But Vanderbilt is built completely different than Georgia. They are going to rely on some three-point shooting. They have some presence at the basket, but they're going to have to make perimeter shots in order to have a chance. So when Vanderbilt goes back and watches the tape of how Georgia kind of fell off defensively there at the end, what kind of adjustments are they going to make sure they have ready to go on the court to make this one last think, to the end? I think obviously you got to stop them at the three-point line. They made some threes, you know, in the second half, Arizona State did. So you want to control the three-point line. But also a pace of play. You know, you want to get into your pace. I thought Georgia did a good job of shutting them down defensively. But in the second half, Arizona speed up the tempo, got Georgia to play a little faster than they wanted to play. I think if Vandy can control the pace, they're going to have a legitimate chance to win this game. One thing I do know, I know that Bobby Hurley, who's never coached in Memorial Coliseum, did you see he got a little, he got a little <laughs> animated at the end of that game? When that ball is away from you on the other end of the floor, as it will be in Memorial, which is a true home court advantage for Vandy, it'll be a different test for him. It should certainly be a good matchup if Georgia-Arizona State was any indication, of course. It will be a good one. We will be talking about it as soon as, you know, we get to it. And we'll SEC be... still 6-3 and three versus the Pac-12. We can't right. forget that. Uh, another opportunity for the league to get a quality win against the Pac-12. All right. Well, we've got plenty more coming on SEC Network. On Wednesday, starting at noon, our National Signing Day coverage will get underway. That'll be throughout the day right here on the SEC Network. And, of course, if you can't get in front of your TV, you can always watch streaming live on your SEC ESPN app. Pretty frightful out there. Doesn't an all-wheel drive Buick sound delightful? I parked in my living room. <laughs> Bring in the holidays with great offers across the Buick lineup. Like 20% below MSRP on most 2018 Buick Encore models when you finance through GM Financial. I was recently diagnosed with diabetes and my dry skin was a thing that alerted my doctor to my condition. Gold Bond Diabetics Dry Skin Relief. 90% saw noticeable skin improvement in one hour. My skin feels nourished, healthy. There's only one you with your own goals and motivations. Your own definition of healthy and happy. So why isn't there a workout made just for you? Now there is. I am Max, the breakthrough fitness intelligence platform only on the new Bowflex Max Trainer. I'll learn your capabilities. Can you give me one more? And help you reach your goals. We can start at only four minutes. Don't worry, we'll take it slow. But I know how to get you to 30. Yeah, bring the fire. I'm the coach that can meet you and you and you. Beginner to athlete and adapt with personalized workouts as unique as your fingerprint and find the right fit for you. I am Max, only on the new Bowflex Max Trainer. Personalized fitness is here. Hurry, order by the 18th for Christmas delivery at bowflex.com. This is a pair of Warby Parker glasses. They start at $95, including prescription lenses. Right now, we're watching them go through a hinge test, which is used to test the, well, you get it. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. 
My parents were great influences in my life. Both of them got their degrees slowly. My mom took me to her classes, and that's when I decided I wanted to be a professor. Two of my biggest passions are horses and chemistry. It was clear that Texas A&M understood the importance of science. To be selected as the 2018 SEC Professor of the Year is awesome. <laughs> it's just the epitome of recognition of your work, and it really does mean more in the SEC. Back inside the pavilion, hey, Santa's here. A two-point lead for Chattanooga over Ole Miss on the road, too. They end the first half on quite the run, a 16-3 to run with the former Illinois guard, Sean Harrington, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. And, and hey, Ole Miss led by as many as 12 in this first half, started shooting very well from the field. Yeah, both teams have to be happy with what they did for half of the first half. And right. for Ole Miss, it was right out of the gates. The two seniors completely took over this game. Terrence Davis did a really good job of attacking the basket, getting some easy shots for Ole Miss, and getting Bruce Stevens going around the basket. He stepped down, he knocked down a three. Looked like Ole Miss was going to run away with this one. But then Chattanooga does a really good job of chipping away and exploded at the end of the half. And what you see is totally involved in every single one of these plays, getting different guys involved. He had seven assists in that first half. He was the engine to that offense late in the half. And he missed the last three due to a suspension, a huge return. Both two teams shoot 59% from the field, but Ole Miss doesn't hit a single basket from the field over its final five minutes and 23 seconds of the first half and that enables Chattanooga to finish on the 16 to 3 run well, it's Terrence Davis he's hit his shots he's got to get the offense rolling in the second half Chattanooga by two you probably don't spend a lot of time thinking about banking you're probably more focused on living for today and planning for tomorrow. That's why Regions puts you first. We know there's more to you than your checking account. You're dreaming about a vacation home, or season tickets for your team, or finally taking those paddleboarding lessons. With our people, our tech, and our tools, we make your life easier because we get it. Some things are bigger than banking. You know that expensive watch you always wanted? It only cost a fraction of the price to make. We thought that was crazy, so we made our own watch company. We created unique watch designs, launched online at fair prices, developed new styles, shipped to over 160 countries around the world, and created a community. Now, you don't have to overpay for a nice watch. Instead, join the movement. Shop now at MVMT.com. Hiring delays causing work to pile up. That's not smart. Then there's smart. ZipRecruiter finds people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. So you get qualified candidates fast. That's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. ZipRecruiter, the preferred job site of college sports fans everywhere. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash coach. I've got a big family. Okay, pick your head that way. No! That's a lot of people and pets to make happy this holiday. So I'm always looking for ways to save. With Chewy.com, I get low prices on all of my pet food and supplies. I find amazing deals on dog food for Dasher, cat toys for Comet, and biscuits for Bob. Even the shipping is free. With all that money saved, I can get a little something extra for everyone on my list. Make their holiday dreams come true. Save 30% on your first order today at Chewy.com, where pet lovers shop. The Oxford Square, it's in the holiday spirit this time of year, lit up nicely. We're about a mile down the road inside the pavilion where Chattanooga leads Ole Miss by two. Started the second half 
with Sean Harrington. Kevin Fitzgerald with you. Thanks for joining us on a Sunday, now early evening in Oxford. Now, Ole Miss didn't shoot the basketball too poorly. It had a 12-point lead at one point. And with Morgan Freeman in attendance, they better pick it up. <laughs> yeah, both teams shot the ball extremely well, almost 60% for both. For Chattanooga continued to attack. Get into the lane with dribble penetration, kicking out to threes. Ignited that run. Davis, they punched it free. Slides out of bounds. Excellent hustle. Tumbling in front of Morgan Freeman as well. Good defense getting into the passing lane. And excellent job sacrificing the body, trying to save it. They're going to reset the shot clock on that. Let's say you don't have too many plays drawn up for your full court. Three seconds left on the shot clock. <laughs> Fortunately for Chattanooga, they're going to get a fresh 30. So possession established by D.C. Davis. And now ball back to the Moss. Quite the slide. Covered some ground. Now the baseline. Jerry Johnson, Jr. He tried the reverse. This is Schuler. See if Schuler and Tyree become a little bit more aggressive here in the second half. Both of them quiet in that first half. Uh, Ole Miss was feeding the bigs in the first half, right? Blake Hinson, the freshman from Deltona, Florida. A strong move from the freshman. And all the way to the basket. Finishing right through a defender. Ball three. And Thomas Smallwood fell on it momentarily. And they say he had it when he was rolling out of balance. This is Ole Miss basketball. I mentioned Chattanooga finished that half 16 to 3 run. You can tell Kermit Davis talked a little bit about defense there at the break. Got the deflection on the first one that time. Aggressive defense in the corner. Easily went flying, so there's a foul on Ole Miss. And then there is a technical foul on the freshman, Blake Hinson. And he said something after the whistle. Okay, that's a team foul in person, okay? Two shots in the ball. I'm coming, I'm coming the foul was on him. He didn't agree with it. Can't get away with that. Got to control those emotions. Hurts your team, hurts yourself. So two technical free throws. And then after the common foul, it's, it's still Chattanooga basketball. Their team shooting particularly well from the free throw line. Johnson, 83% coming into the game as well. For him to go for two, very unlike him. Blake Henson, freshman, teaching point, no question here. That control those emotions. He made a very aggressive play down low. You, you like that. You're okay with the offensive foul. Just got to keep those emotions in check. Can't cost your team a technical. And Chattanooga gives it right back. An illegal screen called on Thomas Smallwood. So that's the third on well, the seven-foot Frenchman. He's heading to the bench. Got to come set. We've seen it a lot. Dribble handoffs. You're going towards your teammate. Got to get set. Play hey, the parents didn't like it either. There's Nadine and David. Dad's explaining. So you hand it off. Can't get that elbow in there. Gotta get set. Bring in Tyree. Loose ball foul. It's gonna stay here. David Jean Baptiste 
got up underneath Dominic Olenicek. A slight height advantage there for Olenicek down low. Jim Baptiste did all he could to prevent the offensive rebound. Tyree had it swiped away. Scott got a piece of it. Well, he hit the ground hard. A lot of contact on that play at the basket. Gene Baptiste for three. And the shots continue to fall for the Mox. Playing with a lot of confidence right now on the road. Gene Baptiste has played terrific basketball. Averaging almost 17 a game over the last four. And Tyree misfires again. Aggressive play. Tyree and Tyree getting to the rim. A lot of contact underneath. And in transition, the Mox take advantage of it. Pick up right where they left off, shooting behind the arc from the first half. Seven triples. So Lamont Paris's team went 17 of 44 from beyond the arc. Last time out against Georgia State, a bit more efficient, seven of 11 today. They've shot it well from the field. They can take care of the basketball. They're getting good looks at the rim. Vila, a little too much dribbling. Gene Baptiste had it blocked. Schuler. The recovery by the sophomore from Irmo, South Carolina. Not giving up on the play. Will come up with the block from behind. Easily can stretch the floor. Buffin, he went right into the defender, and there is an offensive foul. <laughs> Ole Miss has not had a lot of chances to get out and run and score in the open floor. Really good job that time. Jean Baptiste getting back in transition, getting those feet set, taking the charge. Taking away a fast break opportunity from the Rebels. Kermit Davis is doing quite a bit of pacing. Gene Baptiste is open and another three. Great extra pass to set up that three from the corner. Again, dribble pen penetration, gets that defense to suck in, and then the unselfish play, Vila, the quick ball reversal to get Gene Baptiste that bucket. Big make that time from Terrence Davis. Ole Miss needed something to go down. Yeah, they're going to call it a three. They'll check it at the next media break to see if it was a two or a three. Up top, Jerry Johnson Jr. misfires. So not every look from beyond the arc is going to fall. Three and Tyree in rhythm. Tie game. It's a quick turnaround. Chattanooga's been hitting threes. That last one, maybe a little quick from Johnson, leads to a run out. Bring a Tyree, makes him pay. This one somehow winds up in Totally's hands. Oh, and he check swats it off the board. Tyree, 4 3. Momentum has shifted. A 9 0 run, maybe more. Schuler banks a triple. Timeout, Chattanooga. Now that I've got you here for a minute, 
number two, actually. I've got to tell you something. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. My credit card only earns double miles on airline purchases. Well, you earn double miles on this and on everything with the Venture Card. Thanks. Hey, by the way, how'd you get in here? Same way you did. Cross-checking. Nice. What's in your wallet? Oh, come on! For drug-free sinus relief, experience Navage, the next big thing in nasal care. Navage is the only nose cleaner with powered suction to pull refreshing saline rinse in one nostril and out the other. Navage relieves congestion from allergies and colds naturally by flushing out allergens, mucus, dust, and germs. I used to get so congested, but Navage cleans out all the stuff that makes me miserable so I can breathe again. Now at CVS and Navage.com, you'll love that clean nose feeling. A tidal wave for Kermit Davis's team. Once down in this second half. A 12 0 run. As the home team back up by six inside the pavilion. All these threes have started falling. And Old Miss can be explosive on the offensive end. Playing with a lot of energy. The defense leading the offense. They haven't had a lot of opportunities to run out. But they have here in the last 30 seconds. They make Chattanooga pay. A 12 0 run for Ole Miss. And they're four of five from beyond the yard. And that was a 12 0 run look in a minute and 10 seconds. And that's what you just let it get away from you, Chattanooga. A couple quick shots, a couple turnovers lead to runouts. An Ole Miss team that's shooting the basketball with a lot of confidence right now. Hard to find shooters on runouts in transition. Tyree and Schuler able to get free. Make you pay. Ole Miss made two threes in the first half, and as it right now has four in the last minute and 10 seconds. Although right now, Sean, at our officials, it's Joe Lindsay, Olandis Poole, and Chuck Jones. They're looking back at one of those threes. You mentioned it. You said Terrence Davis's foot might be on the line when he took his prior. Take a look. Yeah, they signaled it right when he shot this two slash three. It was really close. Tough to tell from that angle. They called it a three. So unless they can show Evidence that it was a two. They would have to stick with the call on the floor. And there is not enough evidence. It's going to stay a triple. Yep. So it's still a 12 0 run. And now, if you're Chattanooga, you've been in this position before. You were down 12 in the first half, took the lead going to the break. So you got to play with poise, confidence. Go right back to how you made that run. And it was attacking, getting into the lane, kicking out for shooters. Yep, and right to Vila. And he missed it. Got to be aware of the shot clock. That did not hit rim. Five to shoot. Kirby's pass was, looked like it might have been kicked. This is Ole Miss basketball. Timeout on the floor. The Rebels back up by six. Star Backyards, Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. I always wanted to speak French, and I just put it off and I put it off and I put it off. And then I went, I've got to start at it now or I'll never get it done. And that's when I found Babbel. The Babbel app is great because it's intuitive, it's interactive, and it's right at my fingertips. I never knew how easy learning a new language could be. They start by teaching you words, phrases, matching them with pictures. It's easy. And then 
The sentences get a little bigger and they put you into a simulated conversation and you're understanding what's going on. Now I'm speaking French with confidence. Au, au français, j'ai parlé français avec confiance. So, which language do you want to speak today? Now you can try a Babbel free and see just how quickly you can start speaking a new language. In just a few weeks, I was confident enough to have an entire conversation in Spanish. Las gambas have been deliciosas. Tu español es perfecto. Mm, gracias. So try Babbel free. Go to Babbel.com or download the app today. Rebels back ahead by six after a 12-0 run. And the women's basketball team here watching from the stands. A great women's basketball game on Tuesday. A top 15 battle starting at 6 Eastern featuring 11th ranked Stanford and 9th ranked Tennessee. Right here on the SEC Network. You can always watch it on the ESPN app. ESPN app, I should say, from anywhere. Stanford. Just took down third-ranked Baylor on Saturday. Now you have to go face ninth-ranked Tennessee, so good luck. Everybody in the holiday spirit at the pavilion. Hot shooting in this one as well. Both teams, when they're not turning the basketball all over, are making their shots. Six of seven made three-pointers combined from these two teams here to start the second half. And it's been good offense. Ole Miss has gotten a lot of theirs in transition. That's a terrific executed play. And Schuler's at the line for one more. We've seen this a couple times out of the break. Now for Ole Miss executing out of a timeout. Great setup. It's a big fella, Olenicek. Putting the ball on the deck. Nice bounce pass to lead his teammate to the rim. Schuler does the rest. And, and they won. They were feeding Olden Echek in the first half, returning the favor. Yeah, big going to the guard this time. Schuler, who scores 11 a game, the sophomore converts. And now the lead balloons to nine. 15 0 Ole Miss run. Attack in the 1-3-1 zone. Corners could be open if you get ball movement. Totally from well beyond the arc. Tyree off the window. Offensive board to Olden Echek. Right back down low to Buffett. Contact right at the apex. Keegan Kirby. Freshman got a piece of it. Kirby. And Buffett this time. He secures it with two hands. Shot selection. A little questionable right now for Chattanooga. Some early quick threes. And that time, Kirby, if you're going to shoot that, shoot it right away. Don't get the ball fake into the shot. There's a junior from Somerset, New Jersey. Bring in Tyree. And Tyree and Schuler were quiet in the first half. Only two combined points between the two of them. They have definitely been more aggressive here in the second half. Yeah, Tyree into double figures now. He has 10. Chattanooga did a nice job of attacking the paints in the first half. Jean Baptiste scoops it up and out. Old Miss has amped up the pressure on defense a little bit, but Chattanooga also has settled for some threes. You mentioned they were red hot from beyond the arcs. So now they're relying on that a little too much. I suppose getting those threes out of the rhythm of their offense. How about the reversal? The box ended the first half on a 16 to three run. It's a 19 to six run to start the second half for Ole Miss. And more specifically, a 17 to zip run. Tyree the stutter. And he's at the line. Count the basket. Every good guard 
needs to have a change of pace and a change of direction in their game. And you saw that from Bree and Tyree right there. Comes around the ball screen, hesitate, gets that defender to stop, and then blow by and finish at the rim. So during your years at Illinois, who was the best guard you played with or against? at changing speeds, fooling the defenses that way. I've played with Frank Williams, and he was excellent at changing direction, changing speeds. Darren Williams was a freshman my senior year, so he became incredibly good at it too, but Jay Williams at Duke was oh, the best player I ever played against, and you talk about changing speed and direction, he'll get you spinning around. I think those Duke teams went on some 20 to nothing runs at times, and well, Chattanooga still cannot snap this run. Ole Miss with the 14 point lead. All right now Chattanooga's got to find some continuity on that offensive end. Mom Paris is talking to his guys. We've got to take better shots. Took really good shots when they closed out the half and even to start this second half. And now they're relying a little too much on the three. They're not getting that penetration into the lane, kicking out the shooters. Sometimes making those threes can be fool's gold. You gotta have a balanced attack. Bruce Stevens, another jam. And yeah, he's into double figures. And Ole Miss is attacking right now. Stevens gets it inside. This is a young Chattanooga team. Sometimes when you're not making shots, you start to slip up on that defensive end. Right now, Ole Miss is getting anything they want on the offensive end. Easily has not hit one from beyond the yard. Scott. No chance there. This run continues. And it grows even further. Terrence Davis. 25-0 run for Ole Miss. And they still can't get one to fall. That was from a couple feet out. Feel the pressure mounting right now to make a shot to end this run. Tyree. Ten straight misses for the Mox. Chattanooga's right, got to get something going towards the basket. There you go. Got to think easily can do it. Here the shot blocked. Stevens. Davis to Tyree, the transition three. 28 nothing run. Can't stop him now. Big lead for the Rebs. I put a spell on you. Because you're mine, I can't stand. Come on! <laughs> What's up? Yeah! I can't stand. Yeah. I put a spell on you. Shopping for my pets used to be so stressful, especially during the holidays. But with Chewy.com, I can get those big bags of pet food and litter delivered. So Dasher's dog food and Comet's cat litter can all land under the tree. And I barely lift a finger. Plus, with Chewy, it all ships fast and free. It makes the holidays that much easier. Now the only one lugging big bags around here is, well. Get the gift of fast, free shipping on your pet food and supplies today at Chewy.com, where pet lovers shop. This isn't a liner. Well, to be clear, it's an invisible liner from Smile Direct Club. Our liners take teeth like these and transform them into those. They discreetly take this and turn it into that. We send your aligners directly to you, and in an average of six months, you could have a lifetime supply of confidence. Join more than 250,000 satisfied grinners who got a smile they love for only 80 bucks a month at smiledirectclub.com. Ole Miss down at the half, now leads by 22, thanks to a 28-0 run over Lamont Paris' team. And 
Well, what do you say at this point? How about the threes? The shots are falling for Ole Miss. You find the shooter because they are all over the floor right now. You got to get back in transition. But sometimes when a team's on the roll, there's not much you can do to stop them. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Ole Miss playing with a bunch of confidence, a bunch of rhythm, and they're getting shots out in transition. Stepping into threes. Sometimes it's hard to stop the bleeding. Three and Tyree. Number four in the gray had two points in the first half, but a total switch, and a lot of those 14 from beyond the arc. And he's too good of a player to be held to two points. And he just felt like he was going to come out and be aggressive in the second half, and he has. Teammates have done a good job finding him, but he's shooting it with a lot of confidence. Making shots from the outside. Now, if you're Chattanooga, you got to settle in here. Somehow find a way to get a basket. Boy, that's a low percentage pass. It gets completed. Thomas Smallwood, seven footer. The second chance. There it is. And he's at the line for one more. You can just feel the pressure yeah. off Chattanooga's back on that one. To be able to end that run. Over and his parents. Nadine and David in attendance, making the journey from Bordeaux, France. Had you ever been on either side of a 20, not a 10, not a 20, but a 28 nothing run? No, I, I've never been experienced something like that. And you got to talk to your players to focus in. I say it all the time, one possession at a time, but. That's exactly right. In this situation, you got to get one play to go your way to try to get a little bit of that momentum back in your favor. It's a good job out of a break to get a good look inside for Smallwood. Get that three-point play. And now you got to get a stop. That's where it's been on this end of the floor where Ole Miss is playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of runouts, shooting threes. Got to get hands up on the shooter and box out. I think that was a timeout when Lamont Paris used the whiteboard. Yeah. He spent all those years as an assistant on Bo Ryan's staff, who never used the whiteboard, right? At Wisconsin. But Bo Ryan, the master of just talking to his team through it. It's a lot more than just talking going on that huddle for Chattanooga on this one. Got to draw something up special when you're trying to end the 28 0 run. Stevens kicked that one, and this was the game his, his head coach. Kermit Davis, his teammates wanted him to get going today. Senior from Lewin, Mississippi. Having one of his finer evenings this season. Yeah, making a living right around the basket. That's what he needs to do. Really good execution. Baseline out of bounds for Chattanooga. We've seen Bruce Stevens. He's got all kinds of talent and skill. Needs to be aggressive around that rim. Pinson, though, a double dribble. Yeah, 13 points for Stevens. It's above his average of nine a game. New head coach in Oxford this season, Kermit Davis. The winning his head coach in Middle Tennessee State history. And he dominated Conference USA at MTSU the last five years or so. It really does a good job paying attention to detail in the scouting report. Really enjoyed watching guys go through sets and whether it was running the plays themselves, making sure they're in the right spots, or defending. He would stop it in the middle of possession and correct a defensive mistake multiple times, making sure everybody was on the same page. We've seen the details on the defensive end. Big improvements from this old Miss team. Caldwell for three. Caldwell, another transfer. Played in the last three games. Coming off his best game, 11 points. Davis inside the paint, hits another. He is silky smooth when he can get into that. Mid-range jump shot off the dribble. 
Not much you can do to stop that if you're a defender. Totally and Schuler fighting for the basketball. The possession arrow favors the Rebels. And the lack of breaks. And stre the stretch continues for Chattanooga. Good job by Schuler just being a pest on that defensive end, getting those active hands. Find that pressure, making it hard for Chattanooga to get into an offensive rhythm. Offensive foul, yeah. Schuler wasn't quite sure where he was going with that one. Yeah, just out of control. Those are the types of plays that you don't want to see is the one-on-one. -on -one. Get the ball moving, get the side to side. And we've seen a lot of that out of this team here in the second half. So how far can this backcourt perhaps take Ole Miss this year? Schuler, Tyree, Davis, and they're all averaging better than 11 points per game. And anytime you have good guards, you're going to have a chance to win. You look at the conference right now, obviously Tennessee and Auburn have kind of separated themselves early going. Where's that next tier of teams? Is it Mississippi State? Is it Kentucky? LSU? And then who's going to rise up maybe in the rest of that group? And right now, this is an old Miss team. And you have three guards that are experienced, as talented as these three guys are. I would not be surprised if this team that can finish in the middle of the pack. Maybe surprise some teams a little bit this year. Now, the media projected this team to finish last in the league. Players, they're okay with that. Let's fly under the radar. Seed expectations. Can't stop dreaming about. We get it. A renovated bathroom would mean more than just new tile and a bigger tub. So we make it easy to apply on your phone for a region's home equity line of credit in about five minutes. It pays to be fast. Apply on your phone in minutes. You know that expensive watch you always wanted? It only cost a fraction of the price to make. We thought that was crazy, so we made our own watch company. We created unique watch designs, launched online at fair prices, developed new styles, shipped to over 160 countries around the world, and created a community. Now, you don't have to overpay for a nice watch. Instead, join the movement. Shop now at MVMT.com. Doubleheader on Wednesday on the SEC Network. Virginia and South Carolina at 7. And then Georgia Tech and Arkansas at 9 Eastern Time. Watch it anywhere on the ESPN app. Sean Harrington, you've got some non-conference nuggets for us. Yeah, right now you're looking around the SEC. Tennessee, clear-cut favorite. They have been so impressive what they've done early on. Games against Louisville, played Kansas in the overtime before losing that one. Beat Gonzaga when they were number one. Went to Memphis, dominated a tough road game. They've looked excellent. Right now they are the clear-cut favorite to win this league, although Auburn not too far behind them. A sleeper team, LSU. Three losses, but they have played a very difficult schedule as well. Florida State, Oklahoma State, went to Houston, St. Mary's on a neutral court, and they're going to get a shot to knock off Furman coming up here. They are undefeated as well, so look out for LSU try to make some noise. And we've got some really good backcourts in the SEC this year. Auburn, everybody talking about Harper and Brown, but also LSU with a terrific backcourt. Mississippi State and Ole Miss also with some players as well and if you've got a good backcourt you've got a chance to win games stay in games and right now if you're old miss you have three players that can take over a ball game scoring they can get after it defensively and we talked about this league tennessee auburn definitely have separated themselves in the non-conference portion of the season so far in the next tier i see kentucky mississippi state and i would throw lsu in there with the talent that they they have and after that now who's going to emerge 
and kind of be those next factors trying to get bids to the NCAA tournament. There's no question that this Ole Miss team can get some wins in conference. And Ole Miss is only two losses to Cincinnati on the road at Butler. I mean, those two teams are, they'll win 20 games one way or the other this season. No bad losses right now on the schedule for Ole Miss. They beat Baylor in an early season tournament down in Florida. And Baylor just beat Arizona. Yep. Arizona a little bit down this season, but still a good win for Baylor. Tyree headed to the line. Bree and Tyree, for example, he had eyes on that score last night. Said, hey, you know, look what Baylor did. These players like Tyree and Davis, the older and experienced members of the roster, they care. And they're keeping tabs on some of the teams that they have played. All right, so how talented is Brian Tyree? Remember, he's the old soccer star from high school. Went to St. Joseph in Metuchen. At the age of 13, by the way, he was offered a contract to play soccer for a club team in Portugal. Of course, he decides not to do that. But pregame, he can dribble and then he can dribble. Talk about footwork. <laughs> He's got it on the basketball court, soccer field. Never know, two-sport athlete. He played football as well, lacrosse. His dad was an All-American at Rutgers playing the sport of lacrosse. Wasn't Terrence uh, Davis joking with you? He said uh, the scouting report on the football make him throw the football. Don't don't let him run with it. <laughs> make him run. You can't throw. Admittedly, a running quarterback. <laughs> Lamont Paris is trying to keep his, his box team motivated the rest of the way. Speaking of motivation, I'm impressed with how coachable. Players like Tyree and Davis are their experience. Tyree the junior, Davis the senior. But you mentioned this. They both wanted to stay for their final and final years at Ole Miss. And Kermit Davis in his first year has been blown away. The guys have really bought in. They wanted to play here. And you go through a coaching change, you're gonna get that different voice, different philosophy. And a lot of times, some guys respond differently to a different coach. It can affect guys one way or another. I went through a coaching change as well after my freshman year at the University of Illinois. Lon Kruger went to the Atlanta Hawks. So we had a very successful team. Lon Kruger went to the NBA, so Bill Self came in. And some players responded better to Bill Self. Some responded better to Lon Kruger. So it's just a different voice in your ear and you're seeing right now, there's some guys with a different voice in their ear, have really bought into the system, have played extremely well this year, and they're having some success. When you have some success early on, it makes it easier to listen to what the coach is preaching. And we've seen some improvements on that defensive end. And right now, it's been a good relationship between Kermit Davis and the current roster here at Ole Miss. Two years ago, Kermit Davis at his Middle Tennessee State team in this building two Decembers ago. They led by 30 at the half. And he said players like Tyree Davis, they respected immediately what he started to preach. After Kermit Davis beat this Ole Miss team four times in the last seven years, he went four and one against this team while he was coaching at Middle Tennessee State. That'll earn you some respect. If you can't beat them, join them. So that's exactly <laughs> what they did. Bring them on board and say, hey, we can't beat you, so we'll bring you on board to go beat some teams. You were relatively young still at Illinois when that coaching change you referenced was made. So how did you buy in? To the, now, Bill Self's a great coach, but how did you specifically buy in for the rest of your team when the change was made? Yeah, and again, it starts as a group. We all obviously got together. Do you, are you transferring? Is this going to be a good situation for you? Is it the right system for you now that there's a new coach in? But we really liked each other as teammates. We were a close-knit group. So a lot of the players all wanted to stick together. We wanted to play there. And then when a new coach comes in, practices become really competitive. 
and guys that maybe weren't playing as much before say hey here's a new chance for me to prove to this new staff that I belong on the floor and maybe a guy that's been starting his whole career he's got to amp up his game a little bit because those minutes aren't guaranteed anymore so practices got really competitive early on for guys trying to prove that they belong I think Chattanooga thought better of driving back into the paint with Holman Echek standing there Davis he missed it he was right at the rim Made all the difficult shots today. That one was too <laughs> yeah. easy for him. And the pressure. Behind the back feed. Hinson! Old Miss. Defense to offense. They like to change it up. On this end, the 1-3-1 one, one has given Chattanooga some fits here in the second half. There's another and again. To four on two. Davis. It falls through. Terrence Davis almost at 20 points tonight. Chattanooga running out of a little gas here. They look tired. This pressure defense has gotten to him a little bit here in the second half. And Scott finally finds his stroke in his second half. A timeout taken by the Mox. That defense, it's, it's turning into offense for all Miss this second half. A really aggressive play from the Rebels here in the second half, getting some easy looks at the basket, extending this lead. When my occasional constipation is under control, I can get back to what really matters. Dulcolax provides dependable, effective relief. Dulcolax tablets for overnight relief, suppositories for relief in minutes, and stool softener for comfortable relief. Dulcolax puts you comfortably in control. It's Belk's biggest sale of the season. Hurry in for our weekend-only doorbusters. $39.99 diamond studs, 75% off throws, plus earn Belk bucks with no brand exclusions. Get everything on your list at Belk and Belk.com. With all the selection you'll find at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, deciding on the perfect gift can be challenging. That's why we've made it easy with a selection of gift cards for everyone on your holiday list. For drug-free sinus relief, experience Navage, the next big thing in nasal care. Navage is the only nose cleaner with powered suction to pull refreshing saline rinse in one nostril and out the other. Navage relieves congestion from allergies and colds naturally by flushing out allergens, mucus, dust, and germs. I used to get so congested, but Navage cleans out all the stuff that makes me miserable so I can breathe again. Now at CVS and Navage.com, you'll love that clean nose feeling. It's Belk's biggest sale of the season. Hurry in for our weekend-only doorbusters. Like this $99.99 diamond pendant. Plus, get a free Estee Lauder gift with purchase. Buy online, pick up in-store at Belk.com. We have the good hands play for you, brought to you by Allstate. The steal, Terrence Davis behind the back. Good and hands. Blake Hinson with the finish. Yeah, the good hands leading to a good pass. The finish at the rim. We've seen a lot of that here in the second half. That 1-3-1 one, one defense from Old Miss has put some pressure on Chattanooga. Led to some easy runouts. Finish at the rim and also transition threes. Hot shooting from the Rebels here in the second half. And yes, the box led at the break. And, and led by about a handful, just a few minutes into the second half, and then all this went on the 28 nothing run. And there's no going back after that. You don't see 28 nothing runs too often, and that's too much to overcome for any team. Davis has liked that pull-up shot today. And he's got 20. And that's what 
Trevor Davis likes to see the team shooting 64%, but when you're up 21 in the game, you're still playing the game the right way. And there is Terrence Davis doing what he does best, driving, pulling up for that mid-range jumper. That's going to make the staff happy. He's added that dimension to his game, specifically this year. Senior from South Haven. Which is just a little south of Memphis. Tyree gets the worthy high fives. He and Terrence Davis with 20 today. Tyree was really good in the second half. He ignited that run with three threes. Get the crowd into it and get his team some energy. That started the 28-0 run. 18 of his 20 in the second half. He had just two at the break. Half of Tyree's shots come from beyond the arc. So he likes to shoot from beyond the three. Very comfortable out there. Well-rounded individual as well. He's the chair of the SEC's Basketball Leadership Council. He's a voice that his teammates turn to it. He was the most vocal in the shoot-around today. That impressed you. No question. And that's what you love to see is when the players start taking ownership and they start taking control of those shoot-around situations where a play doesn't go right, the guy misses an offensive assignment or guards it wrong, and the players are correcting each other, that's when you start to see some big improvements on the team. You don't want to hear it from the coach every single possession. When you hear it from your teammates, sometimes it means a little bit more. So very impressed with the leadership at the shoot-around coming from the players. Oh, Schuler, the crossover. Rebound to Scott. Chattanooga, a team with so many fresh faces. In fact, the man with the ball, David Jean Baptiste, the only returning letter winner for the season to go. And with Lamont Paris as the head coach, you'd expect they'll get on the same page eventually. But just so many first year players on this roster. Yeah, and they played really well, other than a five minute stretch there. Yeah. To start that second half, he's going on a 28 0 run. It just got away from him. It was a snowball effect. A really good first half and jumped out early in the second half. This is a young team that's going to continue to improve. Devontae Schuler with another three for all Miss. You credit a lot to that 1 3 1 defensive look, right? That Ole Miss threw out of Chattanooga. Did that lead quite a bit to that 28 0? It run? did. It did. And they were active out of that zone. Active hands, getting deflections, steals. Forced Chattanooga to take shots from the outside without penetration. There's A.J. Caldwell, the Sarasota, Florida native. Timeout. Kermit Davis going to make a couple substitutions. With 90 seconds left. Our officials are alerting the players. Just a, a timeout for the, the substitutions. So Kermit Davis is going to go face his old team, where he was the head coach for 16 years in Nashville. They're going to play that game at Bridgestone Arena, the site of the SEC tournament this season. And then SEC play starts on the road at Vanderbilt. You get the 8th-ranked Tigers, the 18th-ranked Bulldogs. Shot blocked. Kirby, nice play. Scott traveled before the shot. Great women's basketball game. This will be a fantastic one on Tuesday. 11th ranked Stanford and 9th ranked Tennessee at 6 Eastern on the SEC Network. Also watch it on the ESPN app from anywhere. Things are going pretty smoothly in Knoxville. The women's basketball team undefeated. And the men's team sitting third in the country. 
Bruce Stevens. It's been a great day for the senior. Great job by Schuler setting that up. Keeping his head up. Stevens has done a really good job of playing around the rim. And this staff is just kind of waiting for Bruce Stevens to put it all together. And this one, Schuler sets it right there for him. Take a look from up top. Big fella going and getting it. Really good game for Bruce Stevens. He was active around the rim. He was able to knock down a three as well. And that's what you want to see. Activity around the basket. Be a force. Use that size. Use that skill. Get some easy baskets for the Rebels. 15 points. Too shy of his career high today. Zach Naylor at the line. Junior from Houston. Brian Halem's into the game as well. Luis Rodriguez. <laughs> Justin Brown had it knocked loose. And now back to Totley. Juan Paris does have a fine guard in Totley. For the next few years, you'd think, the freshman from Maryland. He was the engine of that offense there in the first half when they made that run. He was getting into the lane at will. You can't teach that. The speed. Quick first step. He'll set up his teammates. Some a good young group of guys. Rebels are still running. Hallams. Kermit Davis says no more fouls with 22.9 left. And it looks like his team is going to win its fifth straight game. The longest win streak for Ole Miss in three years. He did a really good job in that second half changing the momentum. It was on the defensive end. A lot of steals, a lot of deflections, lead out to runouts, open shots, open looks. And that's what busted this game wide open. His teams at Middle Tennessee State, always defensive oriented. And he said he wanted to bring a brand of relentless basketball to Oxford. Count the basket. Justin Brown, Chicago native, heads to the line. Penetration. We saw a lot of tonight from totally setting up a teammate. A game in which Chattanooga led in the early portion of the second half. Ole Miss uses a 28 0 run. Pulls ahead and pulled ahead for good. The Rebels now 8-2. and two. Impressive run in the second half. Hold this. They extend that five-game win streak. They did it with defense leading to offense. For the first time in three years, Ole Miss has won five in a row. Coming up next, Truth South Birmingham presented by Yellowwood for Sean Harrington. Our entire excellent crew, I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. So long from Oxford. I'm John T. Edge, and I think and write about the South. Food is my way in. Digging into a city like Birmingham, Alabama, eating snapper throats and collards, I make sense of this complicated place that birthed me, the South I sometimes hate, but always love. In 1884, the first Greek immigrant, Sam Casmus, arrived in Birmingham. He opened a restaurant. Tens of thousands of his Greek countrymen followed. This is the story of that tribe, 
the sprawling Greek community of Birmingham. This limited commercial presentation of True South is presented by Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine. The dining room ready to go. We locked and loaded. We've come to eat at two Greek owned restaurants to see what they have to say about each other and the cities they call home. The first is a new lunch spot named Johnny's. All right, are we ready? This is us. How many pairs of rice did you do? Ugh. Find something for him to do so he's not just standing around not doing shit. Start a fish. Stop what you're doing and do that ticket perfect. Got it? Castro, you have two minutes on those pork chops, all right? Tim Hansis is forever searching until he finds whatever the hell he's looking for. He'll be here at work. It makes my guys nervous when I start chanting in Greek because that usually means I'm trying to calm down from a meltdown. <laughs> or if they come in and there's Byzantine chanting going on in here, they're like, oh, shit. it's been one of those mornings with that guy. To understand Tim Hansis, we need to understand the Greeks who came before him. The Bright Star does business 15 miles west in Bessemer. Since 1907, the daily rhythms here have remained constant in a changing world. The fish truck rolls up.